Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest gruesome and grotesque video. I thought I would mix another one of these here considering the popularity that my past videos have been getting. Lots of views associated with those videos. So thank you so much for your continued viewership and for all those people, everyone that's new to this channel. Thank you for joining as well. And it seems like this series has definitely hit a note when it comes to this info associated with these circumstances. Sometimes it's tragic and very unfortunate. Sometimes the demise that people have, though, is very much their own making. Uh, it all depends on this type of stories that I find. So if I find something that's worth sharing when it comes to this type of series, then I do so here. Such is the case with the story of this man. This was a notorious, infamous, very mysterious gambler, someone whose path crossed not just the legitimate world, but supposedly also the illegitimate world. And then on top of that, his uh, his, his life also crossed over with our current president, Donald Trump. So how about that all in one when it comes to so many unique circumstances happening in this story? And I'll include links, as always, to everything that I found. So that way, if you wanted to see more info, be, be sure to do so. It has to do with this. You're looking at the gentleman now. His name was Akio Kashiwaji, and we'll talk about in this video about his gruesome death later on, but more importantly with regards to his world and the world of gambling and casinos and that how ultimately that could have been tied to his death. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this tale. So who was this Akio Kashiwaji? By the way, I hope I'm saying that last name correctly. Uh, someone, if, if someone wants to please post it in the comments uh, how it should be said properly. But this was a man who was a mysterious figure both when he was living and even now, decades later, it has lasted this long when it comes to no one seeming able to figure out like who he was truly. On the front side, he presented himself as a real estate investor. So he owned a company there in uh, Japan and in this company, he was there buying properties, selling properties, Properties as well. Um, in fact, the name of the company uh, was one that was called Kashiwaji Shoji Company. Very small company though, because he was pretty much the only sole owner. And even then, but considering how large the company was, it boasted of having an income of $100 million a year, total assets of a billion dollars. Still, there was only just a small number of associates. I think I read somewhere around seven associates maximum. And even then, that's disputed when it comes to the total number of dollar figures I just mentioned because apparently the finances were so secretive that when it came to the true reporting, there was mainly only about $15 million in assets as opposed to a billion. Who knows, though, because all this stuff just remains shrouded in an in, in unknown mystery because of the way he kept things so secret. This was a guy who, even though he had all these fortunes, purposely kept himself from being recognized. Uh, for example, there was a fight that he went to, a Mike Tyson fight there uh, in Tokyo, if I'm not mistaken. And while everyone else was getting their pictures taken, he was described in one of the articles I read that it was just someone there on the corner just waiting for the fight to occur. And then that's when he met actually our president now, Donald Trump. So this was all happening, by the way, in the early, very early 90s. Donald Trump at the time, he was some someone who owned several casinos there in Atlanta, or Atlantic City, I'm sorry. And there, he had these casinos just starting out. He was wanting to have these casinos have a huge popularity with them. What best way to do it than to have someone that's considered a quote-unquote whale there to gamble, to spend a lot of money, bring a lot of notoriety, and that helps bring the tourists, the publicity, the photographers, everyone. It's just almost like it's a self-serving form of publicity. Uh, quick note in the world of casinos, by the way, a whale is someone who spends a lot of money, like usually millions uh, when it comes to their total spending, not necessarily within that same night, although some really big whales do so, but most of the time it's over their entire stay. So those are the ones that are most coveted when it comes to that world. Me, I'm just a small little peasant in the world of casinos. I spend, no kidding, it's about $100 a day and that's it no, when, it, when on the slot machines. If there's no winnings, then that's fine. I, I won't lose more than 100 and if I win, great, then it'll be above the $100 mark. So nowhere near what these whales have. Such was the case with this guy, this Akio 
Kashiwaji. He was someone, though, that played Baccarat and then other forms of card games, and he was pretty good at it. The way I was reading the information, he almost bankrupted another casino there in Atlantic City because of the huge amount of winnings that he earned, a couple of million, in fact. So again, there in Tokyo, there at the bout, Donald Trump, uh, in some ways, loosely invited him to come over, and he took the challenge. This guy, Mr. Kashiwaji, took that challenge, and he came over a couple days later. The way I read the information was he came, and then he was able to sit. He got his own private table. It was cordoned off. It was roped off, in other words. He had a private butler there. He had someone ready to give uh, massages. He had someone ready to cook personal food as well, the works. And he stayed and he won. He won big. Uh, I think he won either four million or somewhere around six million there in that run. So that was not something that Mr. Trump was expecting. So cut to a little bit later and Mr. Trump invited him again. By the way, this is all loose information. If you want the real concrete info, again, I highly recommend reading the articles that I've linked. It's a good wormhole when it comes to seeing this past history. So this guy, Mr. Kashiwaji, it seems like he couldn't say no a second time, and he came back again. This time, though, they were prepared there at the casino. The way I read the info, they had everything ready when it came to getting those winnings back. And the way they did it was this. It's all about time. So Baccarat is a little bit of a game more favorable to the players, but the longer you play, the more chances you're going to lose that money, such as what happened here. Uh, apparently, he sat for a long time, several days, in fact, um, coming in and out, just basically staying within that same location. And he was on a winning streak at the beginning, but then he lost it all. He lost somewhere close it's kind of loose when it comes to the material that I saw, but I think it was somewhere around $10 million in total. And then that's when Mr. Trump called it quits. Depending on the information that you read, and all of this is also chronicled, by the way, in one of Mr. Trump's own books as well, when he talks about this infamous tale, he called it quits before the gentleman's bet was supposed to be finished, somewhere around losing either $12 million or winning $12 million. But either way, Mr. Kashiwaji, he was done. Like when it came to that trip, he lost those the funds. The thing is, though, is this. He lost, if I'm not mistaken, some of his own money, but majorly he lost everything in lines of credit. So these casinos, whenever they have these whales come in, they tend to give them lines of credit, which kind of makes sense. Most people are not going to carry several million dollars with them in cash to turn into chips. So instead, they're given these these lines of credit, these loans to borrow with, then the idea is that they pay them back afterward for whatever's owed. Well, he gave a check, certainly, uh, to, to the, the casino on what was owed, but as it turns out, it was not fulfilled. The check bounced, so either the check was stopped or it was just outright written on a wrong account, false account, anything is the case here. And so they went after him, the casino did, uh, to try to reclaim those earnings. I don't know if they ever did. There was a bit of piece of info that I read that said that uh, the casino there, the Trump casino, eventually just rolled off a certain figure, like a million dollars or so, associated with the uh, that line of credit. But it goes to show how fortunes turn. If this sounds familiar, by the way, this is actually something that was also chronicled in the movie Casino, the one featuring um, uh, Robert De Niro and then Joe Pesci, and it was directed by Martin Scorsese. There's a character in that film that's also referred to as a whale, and Robert De Niro's character courts him over, has him come in. The first time that character cleans out uh, the casino, like they make a good fortune and then as they're leaving they make some kind of excuse like the casino does in terms of the airplane that courted him over on a private trip somehow is not working and so they bring him back to the casino this time though the casino cleans out that whale sounds familiar no that's essentially what was chronicled based on this history of what happened between uh, Donald Trump and Akio Kashiwaji so very in very interesting though when it comes to the world of casinos the world of gamblers him, in this case, the Sakio Kashiwaji, how this ties into his death is this. Remember I was mentioning earlier that he was someone that was very mysterious. Well, as it turns out, he may or may not, it's still 
something that's uh, that's not 100% definitive, but he may have been involved in the underworld there in Tokyo. And this was something that would have involved also the Yakuza, the infamous Yakuza. If you've heard of them, uh, then you know about their claims there within that area. So they do not like publicity. They do not like someone uh, purposely bringing publicity to them uh, when they're working with that person. So who knows, but it, it, it could be tied to this. And Mr. Trump uh, says this in his book too. Once this deal happened where he lost all this money, this Akio Kashiwaji, and he returned home, he was met with a large amount of paparazzi, large amount of photographers, journalists, people trying to interview him. All of a sudden, the, clan, the fame that he was trying to avoid came to him in droves. This was not good, especially if he was again involved in that underworld because now everybody was going to look into his finances, into his history, wondering how does he have this much money, especially if his company, uh, his real estate company, doesn't seem to report too much stuff. Uh, remember, I was mentioning earlier something about having about 15 million in total assets. Well, cut to a little bit later after coming back, and on January 3rd, 1992, Mr. Kashiwaji's body was found there in his home. Uh, he had a nice home apparently there in, near Mount Fuji. And he was stabbed, no kidding, less, no less than 150 times with a samurai sword. An actual samurai sword. 150 times. That's, that, it, that brought me back to that phrase that I heard one time, death by a thousand cuts. That must have been what happened here. The body is only so large, so 150 times he was stabbed. And I remember reading somewhere that that sword was left on him standing upright, like him on the floor, the sword impaled on top of him, and it was all done as a message, which apparently is tied to the Yakuza, the way that this death happened. It must have been a slow death, too, because the, the report that I was reading on one of the links showed cases that he was his home was basically splattered uh, it had like a white paper that was adorning so many walls it was splattered everywhere with his blood so there must have been something that occurred in terms of a very very slow death obvious message left something was crossed something bad um, it could have been because of his gambling it could have been maybe he lost money for somebody very important in the underworld it could have been the notoriety he brought from his casinos from his gambling who knows, but all that information still remains mysterious, but the message was he did something wrong, and so because of it, he died in this gruesome fashion. So, And to this day, whether there was an investigation or not, no one knows what happened. Like, no one knows who did it. There was no link to who claimed. Like, no one has come forward stating that it was them. Uh, no one else seems to have pursued this information either. It seems like it's wise to do so, considering the, uh, the, the notoriety that the Yakuza have there. But to this day, it still remains as mysterious as ever. So what a way to go when it comes to that. This guy living the high life, a so-called billionaire, potential billionaire, having huge company, very large amounts of bets and casinos, enjoying the high life there, still remains a little bit of, of, of someone that was humbled and when that approach and then it took in this case having a showdown there in one of the Trump hotels that could have led to his demise afterwards so very fascinating stuff again I highly recommend re reading the links when you have a chance and you'll see uh, the wormhole that is this information so what do you guys think with regards to this info anyone else have something I might have missed um, if so please post those comments below anyone out there also a gambler uh, someone that visits Las Vegas or any, know anybody else that's a whale in there, if you have a perspective on this, then please share those comments too below. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.